can get. Perfect. All right, so how's everyone doing? How's everyone enjoying the annual summit? Yeah. Woo! Cool. Uh, so my name's Ainsley. This is... I'm Visha. Perfect. Uh, and we're here from Next Canada. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about our organization and the programs that we run to support uh, students and, and recent grads who are really passionate about building stuff and creating impact. Is this really loud? Or it's fine, okay. Sweet. <laughs> cool. Uh, so quick show of hands, who here has ever heard of uh, Next Canada or the Next 36 program before? What's your name? What have you heard? Yeah. We're actually going to their demo day on the 22nd, I think, so. Very cool. So you're from Western? Awesome. I'm an alum as well, so. Woo, Mustangs. Uh, <laughs> all right. Moving on. Uh, cool. So if you've never heard of Next before, we're a national nonprofit. We've been around since 2010. Uh, at that time, we were called the Next 36, which is the name of our flagship program. Uh, but since then, we've launched two other programs. Um, the Next Founders Program, which focuses on scale stage companies, more mature founders, and the Next AI Program, which focuses on uh, founders from both inside and outside of Canada who want to build AI-enabled companies. Uh, we've graduated close to 500 alumni, I think, at the end of this I'm year. I'm one of them. Visha's one of them, uh, as you can see in that photo. Um, and uh, so lots of cool impact that's been created by, by these companies and by these founders who are now kind of uh, located around the world and, and across North America. So the Next 36 program is kind of what we want to talk to you about uh, today. And that is our program that's really designed for, again, students and recent grads who are passionate about creating some sort of impact. Um, and we, how many, hands up, how many people here have a computer science or engineering background? I think most of you. Anyone with a non-computer science or engineering background? Cool. What is your background? Finance. Finance? Finance. Game design? Cool. Criminal justice, cool. very cool. Uh, awesome, so the cool thing about the Next 36 program is we take uh, students from all across Canada and recent grads, uh, regardless of academic background or discipline. So it makes for a really interdisciplinary cohort and we really kind of challenge people to broaden their definition of, of entrepreneurship. Um, so we're looking for people who have been community leaders, uh, academic achievers, um, champions of different causes, uh, who have been able to kind of show leadership and rally people around a vision um, or an idea. So you may have you know, started a, a business, you may have started a website, started a uh, nonprofit or, or a club, or, or led a club like Google Student Developers Club on your campus, um, or you've just seen an opportunity and, and gone for it and, and built something. Um, so we really challenge people to kind of broaden their, their definition of entrepreneurship and think about what are those traits that you know, mean that you're someone that can actually uh, take a company or an idea to uh, global relevance. In terms of eligibility, again, we're looking at, uh, typically you're in the sweet spot if you're in your third or fourth year of study, or uh, just you've graduated within the past two years. Uh, you need to be able to commit to the full-time program between May and mid-August, uh, which happens in Toronto, um, but we'll get into the timeline in a little bit. Um, and the cool thing is that you can apply to the program anywhere on that spectrum of just being an individual, maybe with an idea, still looking to build a team, all the way to having a pre-existing team uh, with a pre-existing idea, perhaps some early customers, as long as you haven't received any outside investment, uh, you'd still be eligible. So the Next 36 offers kind of a, a cool mix of different resources, and Visha will tell you a little bit about her perspective and, and experience in the program. Uh, so kind of everything from your traditional uh, seed funding, so up to 50K in seed funding uh, through the program, workspace, mentorship, advisory resources. Um, and I think one of the cool things that's a little bit different about Next36 is the founder development. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that um, now. Um, and so uh, founder development is um, kind of how it's the way that we refer to the majority of the programming we run over the course of the summer. Um, and it's kind of academic programming. So we're actually bringing in visiting professors from Harvard, MIT, Georgetown. Uh, we work closely with Rotman at the University of Toronto. And they're actually coming in and uh, you know, delivering these classes for roughly five to 10 hours a week where you're learning 
all about these different topics like entrepreneurial venture finance, strategy and innovation, globalization, how to think about your business on a global scale. Um, and alumni have kind of referred to that programming as a condensed MBA for entrepreneurs. So um, even if you do have a business background, it's kind of that applicable business knowledge that you can then apply directly to the startup that you're working on. This is a cool example. Uh, is anyone familiar with uh, Stephen Lake and Thalmic Labs Now North? Some people. So uh, Stephen was a mechatronics uh, student from Waterloo, um, came through the, the 2012 cohort, I believe, um, and uh, coming in from a super kind of technical background. And uh, one of the really interesting things that he says about the program is, you know, post-program when he was working on uh, Thalmic Labs and going down to the valley trying to raise some capital, the investors were just kind of taken aback at like, hey man, you're super young, like how do you know, you know how to negotiate for these terms and um, get the best terms for your, for your cap table, for your company? Um, and he pointed back to one of the classes that's delivered in the Next36 program where we bring in Professor Raman Ananda, who actually teaches the Harvard MBAs um, all about entre entrepreneurial venture finance. Um, and so that's kind of an example of a class that you would get to sit in on that is actually directly applicable to, you know, setting your company up for long-term success. Mentorship is also a really big part of the program, and we do our best to really bring in kind of the best of the best um, in terms of Canadian serial entrepreneurs, CEOs, and business leaders. Um, and each team will be kind of assigned a, a mentor based on their... Uh, that mentor's uh, domain expertise are based on the space that their business is in. So, um, and really kind of amazing people. So uh, Janet Bannister, um, is anyone familiar with Real Ventures? VC firm kind of based out of Montreal, but active all across Canada. Um, and Janet's really well known for also bringing Kijiji to Canada a couple of years ago. Uh, people like Kirk Simpson, who founded Wave Accounting, which is accounting software for small business owners, uh, was recently just acquired by H&R Block for about $500 million. Um, people like Satish, whose design agency was acquired by Shopify in the early days, and now he heads up product globally for the company. So really people who have kind of been on the ground and, and either built or scaled uh, massive companies, and, and they're kind of taking the time to sit down with you on a weekly basis. And then there's the network. So I kind of mentioned um, you know, close to 500 different alumni who have been through the program that are building really cool companies. Um, and it's, Visha can tell you about you know, how amazing that network really is. Um, and then beyond alumni, we also have amazing partners and resources. So folks like Osler are providing all of the legal services to all of our startups. Uh, folks like Google, uh, Slack, Air Canada. Um, so some really amazing partners and perks that are coming from that uh, community as well. And so with that, um, just a quick uh, note on kind of where we are at in this year's cycle. So we do one cohort a year for this program as well as our other two programs. Um, and right now we're kind of just getting ready to launch applications for the 2020 cohort. So they'll actually launch on Monday. Uh, we will do recruitment and accept applications all the way to October 16th this year. Uh, so during that time, we're going to be traveling across Canada on our national campus tour. We'll make sure that we have all of your contact information so we can let you know when we're going to be coming to your university. Um, after applications are, uh, after the 16th essentially, we go through the selection phase. Then we will invite about 80 finalists from all of the applications to Toronto uh, in that first weekend of December for National Selection Weekend. And so that's really a chance for people to do mutual interviews, get to know one another, but also go through uh, almost like a sneak preview of the intensity of the program. So they're doing back-to-back uh, you know, -back interviews with the selection committee, getting to hear from some really awesome guest speakers. Uh, and then that weekend is when we actually select the final uh, lead 36 founders who take part in the full program. Uh, the first four months of the program are all part-time and remote, so you can be at your home university, working away on your startup, checking in with your mentors on a regular basis, um, applying for funding at different uh, tranches. Um, and then the full-time programming happens in Toronto between May and mid-August. So that is when you're going to be uh, living in residence on the University of Toronto campus, uh, potentially working out of our, our workspace, which is just up at Bloor and Church. 
um, sitting in classes, taking part in cohort dinners, demo days, all of that stuff. So it's a really fun and intensive summer. Uh, and then all of that kind of comes to a head at Venture Day, uh, which is actually happening next uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and so if anyone here is actually curious and would like to come and check out Venture Day, let me know and we can um, make space for you guys there. It's going to be at the Globe and Mail Center uh, just down the street. Um, and so that's a really uh, cool day where all of the ventures get to make their final pitch. Um, you know, we'll have hundreds of kind of local business leaders, investors in the audience. Um, and then after that, you kind of graduate, become a part of our uh, alumni network. And uh, at this point, I'm actually going to hand it over to Visha, who, uh, after graduating the program last year, has joined the next team full time as our alumni success officer. Uh, so I'll hand it over to Visha. Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm Visha Vijayanand. I'm the co-founder of Posh Posh. We're a women's clothing company that makes all clothes with pockets in it. Uh, seems pretty simple, but you'd be surprised how ridiculous it was to be an undergrad student at University of Waterloo and like lugging all my shit, excuse me, to like every single class and then watching my guy friends just be like, oh, like, swag. And I'd be like, what? Like, why, why do I have to suffer? Especially at like job interviews and stuff, because you have business cards and your phone and you're trying to make contacts, you're trying to look professional and you're stuffing everything into your purse and then you're trying to meet people and then you end up spilling your drink on yourself because you're not coordinated because there's so many things going on. Pockets are a big deal, guys, okay, seriously. Um, so I, I put this out on Facebook as any you know, undergrad student does. We just voice it into the void and I'm like, this sucks, I wanna change the world and make like jeans with bigger pockets. And I thought like as most of my posts, it would get like one or two likes for my mom and like you know whoever else, but it turned out to get like 200 plus likes. And for University of Waterloo, that means you're really popular. So I was like, okay, I think I'm onto something. So. I had one of my good friends reach out to me from my first year in res. She was like, this sounds like a really great problem. I've been on Tumblr, there's memes about this. I think we can like really address this audience of women who feel like they haven't had pockets in their life. And I was like, cool, where do we start? <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. Um, actually, my background at University of Waterloo is computer science, so I was stuck in a room full of like developers, didn't know anything about fashion, someone else put this outfit together, I'm not really like good at this. Um, <laughs> so I was more of like the person who was frustrated and saw a problem that needed to be solved. And Jessica, my co-founder, was the one who has the design background and she was in fine arts and like worked at New York Fashion Week for a summer. So she was like, oh, I can help with the fashion stuff, can you just help with like navigating the entrepreneurship ecosystem? And that's kind of where I want to segue into how Next36 really helped me was because there are so many different amazing programs in Toronto that you can use for your startup, but very few, at least in my perspective, from a non-tech related company, which might not apply to you because you guys are all you know, Google Developer Club students, but um, if you are building a company where it can scale, but you don't necessarily fit the mold for a tech incubator, that's where Next36 puts the um, emphasis on the founder development side of things where it's still very useful for you. So um, it's not really about your idea or what you're working on because at Next36 they realize that you're a very high potential founder, you have the skills you need, but you might not be the right person to like create this problem, I mean this solution and take it to the next level. So they're not focusing too much on the idea that you bring, they're focusing much more on you as a person. And that kind of shift in focus made me feel a lot more confident about my ability to be a founder and develop this company. So that was one of the main things I got from the program was just having the confidence to say like, no, like I can solve this problem. I didn't have the skills before, but I know how to make the most out of resources. I know how to network with people. I know how to leverage LinkedIn to make sure that I'm able to move my company forward. Um, and that's one of the like differences in changes of mind I've had because it like, you don't necessarily have to be an extrovert to be a business founder. You can be an introvert. You can have any different site, um, sort of circumstances and still be able to use the resources that Next Canada gives you in order to make your company move forward. And that's where also the network really comes into play. Because so many alumni of the program are a very tight network, I can say confidently that my entire social circle is like Next Canada people. So every single day we like chat with each other, we hold each other accountable to different goals in our companies, in our projects, and even some people who have exited their company, whether they've sold it or they've gotten acquired or different things like that, um, 
they still want to continue working on really important problems and they're still active in the community and some uh, really awesome alumni are even going into high schools right now and inspiring high school students to start developing uh, really cool companies as well. So the alumni network is incredibly powerful and I think that Next Canada has built an amazing group of really like-minded individuals who want to take Canada to the next step and they see this as like the launch pad for taking any venture idea, any coding project, any type of thing that you're working on that seems like this is a cool thing that I'm working on, but how do I you know, amass the resources to make this an actual company? How do I become a founder? I think Next Canada is the place for you. So I'll hand it back to Ainsley. Perfect, that was great. Um, so at this time, we can kind of open it up for questions. If you guys have any uh, questions or concerns or um, about anything that was said, we can kind of answer that. Otherwise, we'll be hanging around for a bit um, and we'll make sure that you guys have our contact information as well um, so that when we do launch applications, um, we'll make sure to share that information with you guys. Question here. Um, can we go back to the eligibility? Or who's eligible? The eligibility. Yeah, yeah the for sure. Requirements. So uh, for this program, uh, we're looking at um, really any university student, although uh, typically you will probably get more out of the program if you're in your third or fourth year, um, and then uh, up to two years outside of school. And that goes for uh, graduate level programs as well. So we do have some masters and PhD students. When you say up to two years outside of school? Yes, so if you've graduated school within the last two years. Okay. Yeah. So previously, I've heard a lot about Next, but I actually don't know what you guys did until today. So it was, uh, I guess, that's good brand awareness, but... Uh, what school uh, are you from? Just curious. Pardon me? I'm from UFT. Oh, okay. yeah. um, but I guess it's really exciting. It, it sounds like a really exciting program. And because, uh, you know, timeline, I noticed that you, you, you explained that in, from September, sorry, from uh, January to April, that's when the on-campus uh, sort of self-development happens for, for the cohort for the year. I, I think there may be some potential in like, you know, DSC uh, students working together with some of the, if, if that could be another sort of way for us to build community and look for interesting problems, perhaps related to technology, to solve. So I don't know what you are. Your, your this team. is a great thing that you've brought up because a lot of the entrepreneurs who are in Next36 are not necessarily technical, but their idea is technical and they have a hard time connecting with other developers and coders. So it'd be great to have that bridge where, okay, I have to build this application or this web app or something and I want to create an MVP, but I don't necessarily know how to hire a co-op student or like find developers where we could tap into your U of T um, GSC club and like ask you guys about that. That'd be awesome. Right, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it would be good for, well, that's definitely, we'll all stay in touch. And um, I know that during that first uh, kind of, or the second school semester, but first kind of four months of the year, we do a lot of uh, external events, like hackathons, conferences, and stuff like that. So we can kind of uh, align and see like what types of initiatives is are happening on the U of T campus, and how do we align that with um, the companies that are currently in the next cohort, and then also kind of planting a seed for anyone that's uh, in the in the uh, Google Developer Club for that year to maybe take their project to the next level through Next 36 the following year. Yeah, for sure, that sounds good. Cool. It doesn't get more local than local stuff. Yeah, right? we're just down the street, so, you know. Cool. Um, so I've heard a lot about Next 36 and come out to some of your events and stuff, so I'm very familiar with like what you guys do. But in terms of um, what I've seen, there always seems to be a very structured pipeline with several sort of hoops to jump through um, until your idea is almost like good enough to like make it to Next 36, which makes sense. But also um, for something that's like a primitive, say, app, right? How would you like? How would you recommend? talking to your members about like you were good enough, I guess, to apply to Next36? Yeah, so I would say um, when you're actually applying to the program, the cool thing about the Next36, but also the other programs that we offer is it's all actually done on an individual basis. So uh, if you have a, a project or a startup that's on the go, we definitely want to know about that. But we're actually trying to get to the root of you as an individual, like what makes you tick, what's your entrepreneurial uh, track record, what kind of projects have you worked on in the past, how can you show uh, you know, times that you failed and how you kind of rose above it. Um, so we're actually in the application um, 
which is kind of a, a two-part application. So there's a written uh, form, which will go live on the website next week, and then there's a video uh, component as well. We're actually um, trying to get to the root of who you are as a potential founder and why you'd be a good fit for the program. So I would say if you're working on an early stage app, um, that's an awesome thing to showcase, but the kind of stage or how far you've taken that app won't really um, affect whether or not you're, you're getting into the program. To add to Ainsley's point, 30% of this year's program um, started the Next36 program in May with no idea. Like They started as individuals, and they met, made teams in the program and started ideas within the program. Awesome. All right, so if there's no other questions, um, the again, the deadline for this year is October 16th. We're gonna be hosting an application webinar through our Facebook page on August 29th, so that's a cool chance for you guys to tune in, um, encourage your communities to tune in, um, and hear from other alumni uh, like Vishak who have been through the program, uh, ask your questions in real time, and then again, we'll kind of follow up with more information around when we're gonna be uh, doing our national campus tour dates and um, figure out the best way to bring your communities out to learn more. Thanks, guys. Thank you.